Lovely. Well, <laughs> we're back. I'm going to hand over to Elspeth to introduce our donor session starting now. Um, so over to you, Elspeth. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, so thank you so much for joining us for this final session of the Alliance Annual Meeting 2022. Um, it's every year based upon requests from our members. Um, we dedicate space for, for you um, and uh, for our members and wider participants to connect and engage with, with some of our humanitarian partners and donors. Um, so we are delighted to be joined here today by some of our core supporters and allies from, from um, some key donor agencies that really support the child protection and humanitarian action sector. The format of the session will be as follows. We will start with a small um, Q&A panel where Camilla will interview our esteemed guests about their um, views and their, on the challenges and opportunities that we face as a sector and also give a br brief overview of their, of their agency. Um, and then we will have a breakout room um, where you'll be invited to join for um, an open discussion um, and, and then we will end the session. So I'm delighted to introduce, and if Julie, you could spotlight the speakers, we have um, Beth Drevlo from the Humanitarian Protection Advisor from the Bureau for Humanitarian Assistance of USAID. So welcome, Beth. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we also have um, Elsa Lauren from, um, the, from ECHO, um, protection and gender thematic experts. So thank you ever so much. Uh, and we also have Maria Vargas Simojoki, and I apologize if I pronounce the, your, your last name wrong, please correct me. Uh, also a pr protection and gender thematic expert from, from ECHO. So that's fantastic. Um, and we are also luckily to be joined here by Lara Salzman, um, the acting team lead for protection, works alongside Beth, um, who will be supporting as well in, in the breakout room with Beth. So thank you ever so much for joining us. And with that, I'll hand over to uh, Camilla to, um, to conduct the Q&A. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much, Elspeth. And thank you to Beth, Elsa, Maria and Laura, Lara for joining us today. So I'd like to give each of you a minute to tell us a little bit more about your organisation and your strategic focus areas within child protection and humanitarian action. So if I start with Beth, um, over to you, Beth. Thank you so much. So the Bureau for Humanitarian Action is the US government's arm that responds in conflict and crisis. And within the protection team, we have split ourselves according to the various subsectors. And of course, within child protection, what I'd like to say first off is that we align ourselves very much with the Alliance's strategy and priorities. Um, what I'll get into further is how much integration, how much we are promoting integration, um, particularly leaning in on early child development and education at the moment. And in all honesty, within the various regions where we respond, we support all aspects of child protection. Fantastic, that's really good to hear. And um, also the integration aspect too. Okay, so I'm gonna pass over to Elsa. I believe Elsa and Maria will both respond. So Elsa first. Okay. <laughs> Yes, hi. Um, so I will I will take this one. We've been uh, working together on the on the, the thing with Maria, but we don't want to overload you with one and the other. So uh, I'll start with the I start with the the introduction to Echo. I think many of you know, but I will try to mirror some of the issues that have been raised also during the seminar, maybe to make a, a bit of a. So, so DG Echo, as you all know, is a humanitarian branch of the Commission with a dedicated budget uh, to support humanitarian response. And unlike the other uh, European Union instrument, uh, it's very much looking at, I mean, financial modalities allow for a, a faster uh, establishment of, uh, of partnership to address the immediate consequences of the crisis. So we have a short funding cycle, um, uh, as most of you know as well, that is very relevant for specific action that are requiring time-bound specific support. 
but not necessarily adequate uh, to address the longer term impact. And I think that's something that has been also alluded to a lot uh, during the seminar. Uh, so there's a need to bring, of course, other long-term donor, which we are trying to do internally within the EU, but also to reach out to other donors, uh, such as Elizabeth or uh, other dev development donors, but also uh, uh, actors, development actors, such as the World Bank, as no, we saw also during well. your um, your uh, your seminar. No, uh, and well. just to just to uh, the strategic priority very much aligned with the with the child protection alliance uh, uh, policy i mean strategy sorry uh, encouraging sectoral multi-sectoral approach uh, to for prevention protection integrated programming uh, big focus on accountability to affected population and working with local organization um, of course within our own limitation um, yeah as i think we could hear also during the seminar and yeah, that's it yeah and it's great i've seen you in quite a few of the sessions elsa so thank you for taking the time and uh yes i think um one of the things that has come up is localization and the difficulty some local actors find in um accessing funds so you know perhaps uh, for them also they're not so aware of um the donors and the mechanisms but this is a good chance for them to understand so based on the conversations you've heard and participated in during this year's annual meeting, what do you think is the biggest challenge and our biggest opportunity to better serve children affected by fragility and crises over the next three years? <laughs> so quite a big question for you each there. Um, I'm going to go with Beth first again. Uh, I'm not going to necessarily to stick to just one. I will say I really appreciated someone had something that stood out to me in one of the presentations was someone had said our job is to make children visible. And I really thought, my goodness, that's such a that's such a lovely way to capture um, what do we do as a global community. Um, what I will say with that is when it comes to raising awareness and ensuring that we get the resources we need and we get the policies in place that we need. We really need to address the right audience. Um, localization plays a big part of that, who, who locally is most responsible. And we also saw a lot of decisions were made at the global level around the pandemic and not, I wouldn't say most of them were made by child protection experts when it came to measures for control and what do we do um, in this setting. So to really lean in going forward on how do we message, we're quite powerful as a community um, and we can, we are more powerful the more united we are on our messaging and the more we stand behind evidence-based practice um, that can really show impact and justify the message that we're giving. It also requires, of course, it, I would say awareness raising is part of our uh, obligation to accountability. The more that we're able to give a message that brings in the right resources and, and puts us on the right track, the more we fulfill our duty to those we serve. Um, the other piece is the integration piece. Um, BHA continues to lean in on integration. <laughs> and it has been fantastic to listen in and hear so many people bring up integration and uh, intersectionality and holistic programming. I think more than I've heard in recent years. Of course, that's what happens. We, we grab onto one thing and we try to move it forward. I do think that we are seeing over and over how much more impact we can have when we work together and when we're able to meet children in spaces that they spaces that are not protection spaces necessarily, where we can find the broader audience of children. Integration from our side, as I said, we really want to lean in on the education and early childhood development piece. And I think that's where we have a captive audience with education. And on the early development piece, over and over within the humanitarian space, we look at, are we actually meeting the needs of children zero to five in our traditional child protection programming? And ECD programming would fill that space. Um, so that this is becoming more and more of a priority and just very excited to hear just the community's realization that, that we must lean in and work across the sectors. Yeah, yeah. I will stop there. Absolutely. 
Okay, so purposeful and collaborative advocacy, I think, is what you're pushing us to do, um, uh, particularly being quite strategic in who we speak to and making sure that we speak to them with one voice. Um, so, yeah, and the integrated work is uh, exciting too to hear your ECD focus and how we can how we can tap into that and, and link in with that as well as the alliance. Okay, so over to Echo, Maria or Elsa to come in on this question of our biggest challenge and our biggest opportunity to serve children better over the next three years. Thank you. So I'll, I'll start and then Elsa will complement. <laughs> um, I think for, for us, one, one of the main things um, that we've been also like talking about quite a bit and, and it, it comes, let's say, out of... Um, several years of attending these annual meetings, so not just this year, I think is, is, is a little bit the focus on child protection coordination. Um, I think that we recognize that there is uh, really a wealth of tools and materials produced by the CP Alliance um, and the presentation of today uh, and yesterday uh, on the different task force and group, working groups, et cetera, is, is a credit to that. There's so much stuff going on. Um, and it's great to have like a network also of experts and a community of practice um, that is working on all these issues. Um, and that seems to be very well functioning at, at, at the different levels, right? So, so both at the overarching level, but also kind of at the field level. Um, I th we think that despite this, there still is a little bit of, um, let's say, a, a persistent challenge um, within child protection coordination to promote centrality of child protection across the sectors. So going into what Beth was talking about, um, the integration, but also like how we mainstream basic child protection issues into other sectors. Um, and I think what, what we would like to, to then also raise as a challenge, but perhaps the opportunities is how do, do we actually move this uh, seriously at the humanitarian leadership level? Um, and I think that, that there is where we, we need to understand a bit better how we uh, as donors and, and other entities can assist you in capitalizing on the work that the Alliance does and then the work that the Child Protection AOR does. Um, potentially at a, at a strategic level, uh, perhaps, you know, we're talking, you know, like global level, but also if, if we need at, at other different levels as well. Um, so I think that, that the tools are there, there's a lot of work being done, but I think it's more for us that the challenge has been, and, and I, will, I will continue to say it's also an opportunity to see how we can flip kind of this coordination in between the two big structures on child protection um, into becoming more strategic um, to be able to push some of these issues forward. Um, especially because there is already so much work done, right? Um, so that's definitely the first one. Elsa, do you want to come in on the second one that we had identified? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, actually. Um, uh, so so on, on the second one, we were trying to figure out, because there are many challenges, but also many opportunities, and I think a few uh, that Elizabeth and now Maya have mentioned, uh, but I think one that came out during the during the seminar as well uh, is is really that uh, this long term planning and and slash funding and, and how it does impact actually uh, the continuity of care. So whatever we do at the emergency stage, how we can we sustain that? And knowing that we are very much conscious that, uh, as I mentioned in the in the beginning, I mean our funding cycle for Echo is 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 very I mean it's small I mean it's short term. Uh, we are dealing with protected crisis uh, more and more, um, and and it's a bit difficult to have a long. I mean I think we need to have that long vision, but that means that again we need to bring the the right actors on the table. And I think what was nice in that seminar also is that you had the, again you had the World Bank. You had the, the SRSG office, which is definitely, I think, it's the first time that uh, I see the SRSG in, a, in the Alliance meeting. And it, I, I find it really great. And, and it's also showing how much we need each other uh, in terms of visibility, but also in terms of 
there are really uh, issues that are critical, like the CAC issue, and that do, uh, uh, I, I mean, I think at some point in the seminar, we alluded to, you know, the need to make sure that we have long-term funding, for instance, for reintegration and for do no harm, because we, we stop the funding at some point if we integrate children, then there's no follow-up, there's no reintegration that is actually successful. You need at least a five year planning. And I think that's where uh, we feel that there is still a challenge. I remember that there was a, an Alliance a seminar uh, that was focusing on some nexus, uh, 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 I mean, the infamous or famous nexus, uh, to try to really look at inclusion uh, uh, of, of refugee, let's say, international system, but also to, uh, to really see how can we complement each other uh, uh, as uh, protection actors, but also as donors vis-a-vis uh, -vis our uh, funding mechanism, our prerogative and our mandate. So I think uh, it's a challenge, but it's also, there are also plethora of opportunity. There have been a lot of initiative, uh, be the blueprint, being the, 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 you know, all the compact that have been disseminated as well, in addition to the, you know, all, all the tools that the, 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 the CP Alliance has also produced. So um, I think one thing we were wondering at many occasions with Maria is how do we help you uh, to actually bring those people on the table? Uh, how do we do that in a more systematic and maybe in a more strategic manner? Um, so, yeah, I guess that's, uh, I'll stop here. <laughs> it's quite an offer that I think I'm hearing from you all to support our work with other sectors and support our calls for longer term funding and um, yes i'm sure people will be keen to discuss further in the breakout rooms before we go there i'd like to ask the last question that elspeth has kindly put together um what would you like to hear about from the wide range of humanitarian child protection practitioners with us here today and of course they might not just be humanitarian uh, or child protection practitioners we might have some development and other sector folk there too but obviously the, the, the dominant group are the humanitarian child protection practitioners. So when we enter the breakout rooms, we'll you keen to hear from And I need to direct my question back to Beth. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, I think we've been looking forward to this opportunity for this particular one hour, simply as we, as donors, and we discussed this in the, in the pre-meeting, how much we really appreciate hearing back from the partners. Um, and this whole, three days has been an opportunity to listen in and hear the questions and hear the concerns. I think particularly around integrated programming, we know that there's a practical element to this. Um, and that is how much are your organizations leaning in on it? The same with localization. We know our constraints as donors, um, but even in terms of where your organizations within the field are uh, having constraints, whether it comes to integration, um, and around the programming piece, around the mindset of the organization as a whole to do integrated programming. So interested to hear, particularly around this and multi-sectoral programming, what you see is working or what you see are the needs going forward and where we can support. Um, in terms of, okay, that was integrated. In terms of prevention and localization, the same question in terms of what more is needed to push forward the prevention side of programming. Um, and then lastly, I'm trying to read my question on the side here. Ah, what can the child protection community, us as a whole, do better in our messaging and advocacy when it comes to driving change, especially as we look at building back after this last two plus year crisis in the globe? Thank you. Sorry, I lost my mouse on the other screen. <laughs> I was busy taking a few notes. Okay, so um, handing back to um, Echo colleagues, um, who'd like to come in on this one. Yeah, thank you. I think that um, Elsa already raised one of our main questions uh, and it has very much to do on the Nexus. Um, we realize the Nexus is, is, is extremely difficult to work with and it's extremely difficult to operationalize. Um, I think we often find ourselves at, at a crossroad where it's extremely difficult for us to understand what it is that we need to do to help partners. 
potentially either transition programming or find sources of funding that are longer term. Um, so I think we would definitely like to hear from, from the partners here today what it is that they think that we should be doing um, to help this transition in the Nexus. And the more concrete you can make it, the better. <laughs> uh, I think also to be able to feed a little bit our Nexus colleagues. Um, I, I often not, I mean, I'm sure, as I'm sure you're aware, Nexus often not works easier for other sectors in protection. So we have usually very good examples of transition of health programming or education programming. But protection often hits a wall when it comes to the Nexus. And, and part of it is that I think the people that are kind of in charge of the Nexus have, have a bit of trouble understanding what are these concrete steps. So we would definitely like to be able to, to see how we can assist with that. Um, and then I think that otherwise, we, we're just interested in, in hearing um, other issues that the partners would like to raise. Um, so, so we leave it open in that sense. We, we, what we would like to hear from you as practitioners, if there's any, any other ways that we, you think that we can help in terms of supporting the child protection agenda. Um, we realize that more funding- we, we realize that like um, more funding is always welcome, but perhaps <laughs> that's not always possible. But if there's any other ways that we can assist you in pushing the child protection agenda, we would be very happy. Okay, great. Well, I think there's plenty of uh, food for thought there as in addition to the points that the participants might want to bring of their own. Um, so I believe we're going to move into breakout rooms, um, one for each donor. So uh, Maria and Elsa in one and uh, Beth and I believe her colleague Lara is with her as well in another. So just while our producers set that up, um, I wanted to just uh, say a little bit about the purpose of the breakout rooms. So oh, as we've been discussing already in this introductory Q&A, they're about everyone sharing their thoughts about child protection issues, what we should be doing as a sector, and um, kind of funding gaps and, and issues with funding mechanisms. So it's less about discussing kind of specific funding arrangements um, that you might be applying for or have applied for in the past. That's uh, not really ideal conversation when we're in the kind of group setting. So just a sort of reminder to, to stay on topic. Uh, we're on the technical issues, advocacy issues, um, what we can do as a sector, how we can work together with donors. Okay, so I'm gonna see if Elspeth or Julie are able to let us know if the breakout rooms are ready and ask Elspeth if she has any more she wanted to say before we go in there. I know she's got a slightly shaky connection today. There we are. The first time ever we have a power. <laughs> uh, so I'm using a hotspot, so it cuts out from time to time. But there's going, the, the breakout rooms, there are two, Julie said they're ready. So people will be automatically assigned, okay? Um, so you'll be automatically assigned to a room, but if you want to change, you'll be able to do so. You can either change yourself, um, or you can write to a producer or write in the chat box and somebody will help move you. So thank you. I hope I've got that correct, Julie. Yep, perfect, Elspeth. Ready, everybody? Fantastic. Off I think we you are. go. And we can stop our recordings. Um, uh, recap of some of the key points that were shared from each, each room. So maybe first we can just hand over to Elsa and Maria just to see if there are a couple of uh, key points from from your room that you would like to reinforce or share with share with the rest of us. Maria, I don't know. <laughs> okay, um, I think so. We yeah, we we spoke about uh, localization, and uh, I guess there were it started with quite a number of questions uh, about the access to funding that is not possible with ECO for local actors, and then uh, how do we actually. Um, uh, make sure that uh, how do we do that uh, so that they are part of the in, in an emergency when we have to respond to an emergency. Um, I think what we explain is that yes, we do recognize those limitations, but uh, again, I mean, uh, we we are working closely with the partners, uh, trying to 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 promote that localization through the through the international organization that are uh, implementing activity. 
uh, with local actors and basically trying to 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 strengthen their existing capacity but also to help them to maybe access some other some other tools um and then i think we had a number of uh, question about, about the, the the nexus um i don't know maria if you want to to continue or if it's uh, because we don't have much time so no, I think there was just one final question or reflection from a colleague about how it's possible to take like these global uh, larger scale events, uh, discussions to the more national level um, and be able to kind of ensure that they are anchored at that level. And I, we, we didn't get to talk about it, but it was a good reflection. <laughs> so just uh, bringing it to you. Great, thank you so much for sharing. That was a great final reflection and a very big question too. I think it was Marco that raised that. So thank you for that. That was very thought provoking. Um, and then maybe just over, over to Beth and Solara as well, if you'd just like to highlight any of the key points that were discussed in, in, our, in our room just now. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I'm sitting here wishing I could chat with more of you in person um, follow, as follow-ups to what just got moving, um, but we talked about the focus on adolescents and how they are such agents of change and even for the bad, how they are pulled in and recruited and um, how this is such a key time in, the, in, in their life um, to really support services. And I know we've taken a focus on adolescents. I think youth tend to fall outside of child protection, but we uh, continue to look at that broadly. Um, but just that emphasis. Also, again, it was brought up how much we need to encourage child participation in our programming, and we agree. And what does that require of us in terms of how much time do we have pre- uh, project planning and how much flexibility do we have in our programs. Um, and then, yeah, we also re-highlighted the need for flexibility and also looked at uh, how competitive we can be in the field and how much we really need to be coordinating and collaborating and sharing resources and sharing ideas. Um, even though I know that feels like it's risky, we may lose out, but hopefully we can continue to um, drive resources to the collaborative group. Talked about mainstreaming and what does it mean to get child protection into other sectors and how much do we prioritize that? And then also within that piece, uh, is BHA using indicators within other sectors to look at child protection needs, which um, Lara made the good point that we continually look to you for your advice as we revise our, revise our application guidelines and we encourage you to give feedback so that in our revisions, which are upcoming, um, we make sure to appropriately address what the child protection community sees as a need. Um, and I think I will stop there. Thank you so much. And before I hand over to Camilla to close, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today and for for being brave enough to, to do this session. I know with an online format, it can be a bit daunting. And we hope that the question that there weren't any any questions which were too which were too difficult, I think. What we really want to try to achieve is that we know that we are one community, whether we're funders, whether we're implementers, whether we're academics, whether from all different levels, we're one community and we have a common goal. Um, so I think it's really important that we have this dialogue and we find ways to have this dialogue, even if it's in uh, online platforms and breakout rooms. I think it's really important for us that we can we can support each other in our different roles in order to meet our common objectives. And I think um, it's, you know, we can, I think it's great if we can just keep having these conversations with each other, these check-ins and making the, and creating this space for us to link up. So thank you so much. And now I just hand over to Camilla for the final, final uh, closing. <laughs> Yes, very little yeah, else to add other than to say thank you to Elspeth for organising and, and uh, continuing to make sure that we are having good relationships with key donors um, as we've uh, had chance to do today. It's uh, They can be somehow intimidating donors um, to us, especially those of us who are dependent on their funding, but actually, you know, these ladies are child protection specialists themselves and child protection advocates, and uh, it's nice to feel familiar with them. So I think it's a really important space in, in every annual meeting that we have. 
And um, yes, otherwise it's been great getting to know new faces throughout the whole three days. And um, I wish you all very well as you take forward all of the learning and new networks over the coming weeks, months, years. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, we're closing out the annual meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you for the community. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Up, yeah. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Until Bye. next year. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.